I'm not oppressed. Now, if I was oppressed, I wouldn't be a Muslim right now. If I thought Islam was an oppressive religion, I would have left Islam. Islam has made me free. She's a poster girl for the jihad. This young British woman has traded life in London for a supporting role in the war in Syria. She's a fighter by marriage, newly wed to a jihadi from Sweden. Alhamdulillah, I couldn't find anyone in UK that was, you know, willing to just sacrifice their life in this world for the life in the hereafter, for best in the hereafter, in fact. So Alhamdulillah, I prayed my Sakhara and Allah ruled that I came here to marry Abu Bakr. Here is within sight of the front line in rural Aleppo province, in an abandoned house they share with the child they're raising. Mariam, not her real name, says she'd fight if she could, but that's not her role. She says she's a Mujahid's wife, supporting her husband and showing solidarity with their cause. He describes for the camera battles fought by the Sunni jihadi militia known as Katiba al-Muhajirin, the battalion of migrants. Yeah, alhamdulillah, I've been participating in five battles before. Uh, there was <clears throat> the prison and then the... The man they call Abu Bakr lists operations. It's an active fighting force. They fight alongside bigger Islamic groups, such as Ahra al-Sham and the al-Qaeda-affiliated Jabhat al-Nusra. It was a great victory, alhamdulillah. We got many shahada, but it was a great victory, alhamdulillah. This is Syria. Victories, defeats, serious atrocities. President Assad's forces are fighting here to take back territory from groups they regard as terrorists. Yeah, just see now I'm going uh, out again, uh, after mock To fight? Yeah. I'm Mariam says she met her husband after coming to Syria for their wedding, arranged by his mother, earlier this year. On tape, she's a cheerleader for the jihad. You yeah. can't need to always attack. You know, so long, you have to liberate the country. Before she came to try and liberate Syria, Mariam lived relatively comfortably in the UK. She went to college. What did you study? Uh, I studied media studies, film studies, psychology and sociology. She's answering the questions of an American convert who's living among the fighters, filming them. She tells him she also converted to Islam four years ago and says adopting the veil in the UK brought problems. Before I used to wear the face veil, um, like, people, it was fine, but then when I started to cover my face, people used to say, like, go back to your country. And I used to reply, like, I was born around the corner. But now she's 2,000 miles away, committed to someone else's civil war. She loses no opportunity to call for other Muslims to follow. These are your brothers and sisters as well, and they need our help. You know, so instead of sitting down, focusing on your families or focusing on your studies, we need to stop being selfish because, you know, subhanAllah, the time is ticking, you know. Some people might say that because of your spirit to fight, that you carry a weapon, they would just automatically classify you and your husband and those who are here as terrorists. We haven't invaded any land, taken their, like, you know, their houses, their food, like raping their women, killing their men. We haven't done that. The Muslims have not done that. It's the people that have come to us and that have done that. But yet we are called the terrorists. By night, the fight is visible from the rooftop. And downstairs, they hear it as well. Mariam's neighbor, Aisha, lives on the ground floor. She's also from the UK, with a young daughter and married to a British fighter. While their men fight, the two women and their children go shopping, and they're taking their Kalashnikovs just in case. Covers, nappies, a bucket. We'll try and get the fresh covers this time, inshallah. Inshallah. Oopsie. 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 Sister, yeah, can you just like slow down a little bit? Because I'm having some oh. trouble maintaining my balance. Inshallah. <laughs> 
Mariam wears gloves for modesty, but designed for speed. She says the gloves the other sisters wear are too feminine. What do you miss from the UK? Food. What kind of food? The junk food, like the cakes and stuff from the supermarket. The Chinese takeaway. My mom's food. Her parents know she's in Syria, she says, but don't know the truth of her situation. She says her father's offered to send money. Her husband earns a fighting wage of no more than $150 a month. Her neighbour, Aisha, again not her real name, arrived more recently than Mariam. She's only been here a month. She followed her husband from the UK when he had the idea to join the jihad. So when he came home and said, honey, we're going to Syria, what did you say? Uh, it wasn't quite like that, but um, he, he'd actually um, he said he'd wanted to come here, maybe have a look, maybe come back to England, and then maybe we could both come together. But uh, when he did come here, he decided to, to stay, basically. So, yeah, I was a bit, um, maybe a little bit unhappy about that, but um, I'm like, it's okay. What about your daughter? And all, how has she adjusted to being here? I think children uh, adapt very quickly, so she's been okay. First few days, you know, she was saying she wants to go back home, she wants to go to England, but um, now she's okay, alhamdulillah. I think she loves it, you know, she loves being outdoors and being able to just just play, really. I, she's okay now. You can't catch me. Mariam and Abu Bakr aren't looking back. They're planning for a visit from his parents. They've settled into frontline life where they compare his and hers Kalashnikovs. My Kalash is better than yours. Um, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Then mm -hmm. why? Because hmm? it got the hood stock. Mm -mm. Yes. Mine is smaller. Yeah, because that's for going to shops and this is for the fight. You yeah, but when I'm shooting my one, it's better than when I'm shooting your one. It feels more comfortable. They've traded everything they had for jihad. Mariam says she's no plans ever to return to the UK, even if her husband becomes a shaheed, meaning he's killed. She's committed to a future that begins in Syria. Yeah, my wife is, uh, alhamdulillah, she's uh, pregnant now, uh, five weeks now. Uh, so inshallah, I get to see the baby before I get jihad. <laughs> That's what I really want to see. Uh, but alhamdulillah, I'm really happy that uh, she's pregnant and uh, Inshallah, it'll be a boy. <laughs> Inshallah. Already looking to the next generation to take on the family jihad.